Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of the Centurus Knowledge Series webinars. Today, we are thrilled to be joined by Nutanix Corporation to discuss embedding Tableau dashboards in your Salesforce environment and discuss how Nutanix is improving their sales operations, leveraging Tableau's Sparkler Canvas adapter. So today's agenda. We'll do some quick introductions, then we'll discuss ways of accessing your Salesforce data from Tableau, talk about Sparkler, and I'll give you a demonstration. Then we'll discuss specifically how Sparkler is helping Nutanix improve their sales and marketing operations. And we'll have a little wrap up, give you an overview of Centurus, and discuss our questions and answers. So today's presenters, I am your host, Mike Weinhauer. I am the Practice Area Director and Solution Architect for Centurus. I've been designing, delivering, and selling analytics solutions for the better part of 25 years. It's all I do all day, every day, and I'm thrilled to be joined today by Mr. Michael Hunter, who is a Marketing Operations Manager at Nutanix. Um, after he graduated from college and worked in marketing operations at a Bay Area company, Palo Alto Networks. He gained a lot of knowledge in the marketing operations area, including things like lead flow, campaign management, and reporting analytics uh, prior to joining Fortinet, where he helped to launch some marketing tools like Lean Data and Outreach, Invention One Source, Connect Leader, and Demand Tools. Uh, he's relatively new to Nutanix, but has already applied his skills to launch and integrate the embedded tools within Salesforce and create processes that better enable the different marketing teams as they interface with uh, folks like the sales organization at Nutanix. So we're thrilled to have Michael here with us today. Welcome, Michael. Um, we, are, we like to get a sense for uh, our audience here and let you guys kind of see how folks are, are doing things that are germane and relevant to the topic at hand. So the first poll we have two today is how are you currently using Salesforce data. So we have our first poll here and the question is, the, the answers are select all that applies. So you can select multiple answers here. Do you use the standard reporting that comes with Salesforce? Do you export that data and then analyze it in some BI tool like Excel or Tableau? Do you push that data into a data mart that contains Salesforce uh, data uh, and or other data? Do you connect, directly connect your BI tools such as Tableau to the Salesforce cloud, or do you do something else that we haven't covered in here? Either you're not doing reporting, which I highly doubt, or you don't know, or you're doing something that we haven't covered uh, specifically. So we got about, wait for this to get a little higher here. We're at about 64% of folks, and then I will show the results and close it out in just a minute here. So here we go, I'll share the results here. So interesting, uh, actually not entirely too surprising. So half of you are using the standard embedded uh, sales reporting within Salesforce. Good three fourths of you are exporting that data somehow and then uh, importing it into the tool of choice or pointing it at it. A uh, quarter of you are either using a data mart or you're using the direct connection capability and then uh, about 16% of you are doing something completely different. Okay, great. So now our second poll here, we kind of are gonna do them in succession today, is how are, uh, what are, what are your Salesforce reporting challenges? So what are the things that you're running into problems with? And again, check all that apply. So either the Salesforce interfa interface is lacking somehow, it's not appealing or it's not interactive enough, you have an absence of trending over time or the ability to do ratio analysis, or it's not easily actionable by your sales organization, or you're incorporating outside reports uh, into Salesforce. You know, you have other data, other uh, other uh, assets that you wanna uh, be able to show in Salesforce, or is it integrating Salesforce with uh, data from other sources outside of Salesforce? So uh, full 80% of you, the, the the biggest issue is pulling data in from other sources. And that uh, that's that's good to see that. I mean, it's not good that you're having the problem, but uh, we really see that at Centurus as a, a huge issue or a huge kind of untapped vein uh, in Salesforce reporting. And then, you know, fully a half to two thirds of you are, you know, see that absence of trending over time. 
and or you know shortcomings in the in the Salesforce interface relative to other tools that are out there. And then half of you see you know there's incorporating outside reports into Salesforce, and then a quarter of you don't see it as being uh, easily actionable by sales. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your input there. Appreciate it. Get some blood moving a little bit. Get your brain uh, kind of aligned with what we're talking about here today. So it, so let's talk first a little bit about ways of accessing Salesforce data. So we, we talked about what some of those ways are. So you can just use the out of the box, you know, Salesforce integrated reporting. In other words, you know, you're not using Tableau to do that. Well, um, that's great because it's relatively easy. It's kind of out of the box. The problem with it is that, you know, this is the classic interface and and it shows uh, it, the, the graphics are not very attractive. It's somewhat static. It's not very uh, interactive, and it doesn't necessarily tell you you know what you want to know. And it's limited to Salesforce data. So the ways around that range from and we'll kind of go in order from simple to most complex are you can manually extract your data from Salesforce into flat files and then pull that into Tableau. And as we saw in the poll, that's very very common. Um, but it's also very, very manual and can be pretty uh, error prone and is, again, sort of limited to that, that Salesforce data from that, that pull perspective. Um, the, at the next level, you can do that direct connection to Salesforce from Tableau, but those are also somewhat limited in that you have to create an extract, so you make a copy of your data. There's a latency element to it, um, but it does allow you to connect directly to that Salesforce data. If you kind of go to the next level of complexity and then and then subsequent values, you can connect to a replica database of Salesforce data that you control. So you pull that out, land it in a database, and this has its own set of benefits. Uh, and then at the highest level of complexity and effort, but also the highest level of value, and I kind of have the magic hat with the money coming out of it, is where you connect Tableau to an integrated database that you control and then hook up Tableau to that. So not just Salesforce, but other sources like your ERP system, your marketing automation system, supply chain systems, whatever, uh, go through some integration process, land that in a combined database, and then point Tableau at that. Then kind of going the, the other way, ways of accessing Salesforce data from Tableau, there's some really quick hits, and this is one that we sort of throw at you because if you're not doing this and you have nothing in place, uh, this is a really easy one for your Tableau authors to do. And you can drill from a Tableau dashboard directly into the relevant Salesforce screens using Tableau actions, right? So I have a Tableau dashboard here where I have uh, the contact name, for example, and it's, uh, it's Jim Frazier, and I have a link in here that, that just takes me directly to that contact. So I'm in Tableau, I click, I go directly into my Salesforce interface, and that is accomplished by configuring a, what Tableau calls a URL action uh, that combines the Salesforce uh, domain name. So you can see here's the URL for Salesforce and then the parameter of contact ID. So you've pulled the data into Tableau one way or the other. And then that contact ID is one of the data fields in Tableau. And I can dynamically populate that from a dashboard. And when a user clicks on that, they're taken directly into Tableau. And it helps you with that context. So that's a really powerful, easy function that you can do right out of the gates. So you could run out of here right out of this, right after this webinar and probably implement that in uh, a few minutes. Great, so how, what, what are these various techniques yield for you? So again, looking at a matrix here and, and sort of Consumer Reports Harvey Balls, you have this most simplistic, the Tableau action I just showed you, Tableau connecting directly to Salesforce, then a replica database, then that combined database. So kind of easiest to most resource intensive or requiring the most upfront effort. And then what does that get you? Well, the Tableau Actions, easy to implement, but also has you know, limited capabilities in terms of taking you from Tableau to the Salesforce screen and enabling that context. Now, if you move up to the next level and you connect directly to Salesforce, you can do all of that. Um, you can do more in terms of uh, being able to drill directly and you can do some basic visualizations and then you could blend that data with other Salesforce data. Now, if you move up to the next level where you actually land that into a replica database, the types of visualizations that you can do and the blending capabilities are more robust because you're using a database. The data federation capabilities in Tableau can be better harnessed, but then you can start to do things like pipeline growth trends, right? The trend and uh, ratio analysis becomes something that you can do because the database allows you to do more complex things uh, in that database. And of course, with a combined database, you can do that stuff as well. And then kind of moving forward, 
uh, with with more capabilities is if you in, in, use your marketing automation platform, you can do things like your behavior score growth trends and do platform source updates and pipeline analysis. And most importantly, you can you start to open up the worlds of being able to land other data, right? Data beyond Salesforce. And that's where the magic really starts to happen. That's where we really see our customers' eyes kind of light up. And then advanced analytics, right? Beyond that, you want to do uh, predictive and, and things of that nature. That's really stuff you can do with a best done with a combined database. Um, but what none of these addresses kind of out of the out of the gates really is the challenge of having two different user interfaces. And I don't know about you, but every Salesforce, uh, actual Salesforce sales team that I've uh, worked on or for or with lives pretty much and breathes and, and eats and sleeps and dies in Salesforce. And they like to stay there and they're kind of loath to go anywhere else. And so what's kind of hinders adoption is that they say, okay, well, we're, we're going to pull the data into Tableau, but um, they don't actually literally want to go over to Tableau and then have to kind of toggle back and forth. Um, sometimes that's a bar that's uh, almost you know too high for them to overcome and it hampers adoption. So Tableau understands this and uh, they actually use Salesforce and they have some great examples of how they use it uh, internally, both embedding Tableau and then the other way around, which is actually pretty cool too. Um, but you can, they created this Tableau Sparkler adapter, which enables you to embed Tableau dashboards directly into the Salesforce interface. So now your sales folks don't ever have to leave Salesforce, they can do all this stuff right within that. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, and, and first, let's talk about a little bit about why. So the big reasons why you should consider Sparkler, um, first of all, is security. Um, Salesforce is obviously a cloud application. All your communications with it are over HTTPS, which in this age of hacking and phishing and spoofing and everything is uh, more and more important, if not sort of table stakes at this point. Your Tableau server is hopefully also secured, um, but Sparkler enables HTTPS communications between those two environments, so it's secure. The second reason is that you maintain the context without having to leave Salesforce. So within Salesforce, I'm looking at a Tableau visualization, asking the question, well, what account is this? Salesforce has a unique identifier for your accounts and your opportunities and all these various objects. You obviously don't want to go and copy paste this or have to memorize it or whatever, or toggle back and forth to type it. Instead, we can pass those things back and forth. Tableau will take that and say, great, here's a visualization for that account. And then here's where the, you know, the mind really gets blown is really the data beyond Salesforce, right? You can take that data that's in Salesforce. For many folks, Salesforce is not your data repository. You don't want it to be your data repository. It's not optimized to be a data repository and certain data shouldn't live there. Um, so being able to pull it out and put it somewhere else, combine data and really put that in Tableau and then push that back into Salesforce is extremely powerful. And actually Nutanix will be here to talk about that in just a little bit and they're doing just that. So what does it look like, um, the screenshot demo? And this is a, a, a lightning view, which is the, the demonstration I'm going to show today is, you know, we have our standard sales application in Salesforce where I'm looking at an opportunity dashboard. And again, this is the, the, the lightning interface and I have a, a high level overview. So the whole tab is a Tableau dashboard and I have uh, information about, you know, my key KPIs where my deals are in the various stages, who are my top 10 deals. And then my good old tooltips have links into subsequent additional information. So I can go to the, an opportunity, for example, and then that will take me directly into the uh, opportunities and then under that specific opportunity. And I can go to the details page, take a look at a competitive analysis of that opportunity, for example, and then drill into other opportunities and or into accounts, right? So this is in a picture of an account page, uh, looking at the details and showing you all those details. So again, it's this is secure. I have linkages in here that automatically pass that context, those complex uh, alphanumeric strings and keep me in the flow of my business process, right? Which is 
progressing and closing opportunities. So let's take a look at what that looks like in my demo environment before we go and talk to Mr. Hunter over at Nutanix. So I'm just jumping over. This is my demonstration environment. And you can see I'm in my sales screen. And again, I have important things like, again, this is securely communicating. This is automatically filtering by the user that is logged in. In this case, I'm logged in as myself. So the context is maintained and I can see all of my key KPIs, average age of opportunities, my total amount, my average deal size, all these, all this information that uh, are, is important within my sales organization. Among all the information that's presented in, are included my top 10 opportunities. So I can go over to United Oil Installations, which bubbles up here to the top. And when I click on that, I have a link to go to that opportunity in Salesforce. And I can just click that link and it's going to open up a new page for me that I can again sort of maximize so you guys see the whole screen here. And it's filtered automatically on that particular account. And I can see the chatter and the details and all the good stuff that comes with that. And what I've done is also embedded within the details another visualization of all my Tableau opportunities. Again, this is, uh, you know, that screenshot that I showed you. This is comparing this opportunity relative to all the competitors that I have in my vertical space here. And once again, I can click on this thing and I can navigate to another opportunity. Likewise, I could go over to, for example, my accounts tab, pick one of my accounts, United Oil and Gas, and under the details, I've embedded yet another opportunity here, sorry, yet another Tableau visualization that really has a kind of an account overview perspective to it. So the total purchases, opportunities within, the, within this account uh, at their various stages, and I can compare it to other accounts. So here's my United Oil and Gas deal. How does that compare to this Grand Hotels and Resorts deal? And again, I can navigate directly to that account and maintain all of that context. So, and the nice thing about this is I always get the question, you know, how does this work with um, my, you know, other interfaces, right? And I can very easily switch this to Salesforce Classic, and this will flip over to my Classic interface and I can look at my Tableau open pipeline, and voila, there's the same dashboard that I had in the Lightning experience. So we have a lot of customers that are uh, using Classic, but are actively implementing, or they have it in some environments, or they're looking at Lightning. The nice thing is that, for the most part, it's a single configuration, and you can then leverage that throughout your organization or you know, across those different environments, and there's not a whole lot of rework to do there. So I always get that question. Hopefully that puts that one to bed there. So enough of me uh, talking to you about this. Hopefully that gives you a sense for you know, how to access data, how Sparkler can really help make your Salesforce more productive. But let's talk about uh, a specific customer example and, and why we have uh, Mr. Hunter here. So uh, Michael, hopefully you're, you're unmuted and um, first, tell it. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Nutanix? It's a really exciting company, and tell us a little bit about uh, Nutanix and what they do. Yeah, so we're a global leader in enterprise cloud solutions. Um, our goal here at Nutanix is to make your infrastructure invisible. Uh, this will free up IT so they can focus on critical apps and services that power your business. And we want to give them the ability to do this uh, at any scale with one-click management at lower costs. That's great. Yeah, it's a, it's a really exciting company um, that enables companies to deploy new solutions and scale them really quickly and, and makes companies more agile. So and they don't have to worry about all that uh, pesky infrastructure, compute, storage, et cetera, underneath the covers. Nutanix makes that stuff invisible. So definitely check them out. They're, in, they're an exciting company. So we were fortunate enough to work with Michael in implementing Sparkler at Nutanix to facilitate uh, improving their sales operations. So, Michael, can you tell us a little bit about what the challenges were and, and why you, you called Centurus to help with uh, improving this situation and process? Yeah, sure. So we have a dashboard in Tableau that helps find customer references for our sales team. Um, the issue was that it didn't live in Salesforce. You had a go into the Tableau server and pretty much find it or find the link to it. It was kind of a mess. And another side of it was um, the requests were coming into the customer marketing team, which is a very small team. So the issue of not being able to find the dashboard and bombarding a team uh, with 
many, many requests, maybe at the end of the quarter or end of year that they just really couldn't handle. Got it. Yeah. So, so we see that a lot, right? You have a, you have a effectively a, a manual process, right? You've got salespeople who are under the gun to deliver against their quotas, so you can report to the street, right? And I mean, and, and they're the the key element behind that. And so you have this manual process to get uh, references from your marketing operations folks, right? And what they had to do is log a ticket, and it was highly inefficient. And then precisely at the at period end when you're really trying to hit those numbers and close deals, and references are usually one of the last things you do, right? When you're trying to get somebody to say, yeah, I feel comfortable with this, somebody's in my vertical or my line of business, is precisely when you would overwhelm the people that needed to make those reference calls uh, a reality. So, so, so there's a real sort of, you know, top line impact as a result of this process. So, um, so then you said, oh yeah, this you know sparkler is probably a good idea. So let's let's have uh, Centurus implement that. You and I worked together on that. In particular, we got this thing running a a few months ago now. Uh, tell us about what what's happening now. Yeah. So now that it's in Salesforce, uh, we were able to create a tab in Salesforce and provision that tab to all sales profiles. So as soon as they log into the environment that they basically live in. Um, it's right there, clear as day, how to access the dashboard. Um, and it's a self-serve tool. So instead of bombarding a small team with all these requests at end of quarter, they could easily access the tool as self-serve as needed, um, right there, easy to locate. That's great. And those, those references are not native to Salesforce. Those, that, all that information comes from different systems, right? Yes. So a lot of it is in Salesforce. However, we have other product information um, in a different system. We also have our content management tool that contains assets like case studies, videos, things of that nature. So we are combining a, a, a few different sources. That's great. And how many sales reps do you have at, at, that are using this at Nutanix? Well, it's over 700 and we're still growing pretty rapidly. <laughs> Wow, yeah, that's a lot of salespeople. So you can imagine the uh, the the either the, you know the burden beforehand, and then being able to automate that is is really very powerful. So let's take a look at what uh, what you've done here at Nutanix. So we have a couple of screenshots of the Nutanix environment. So you can see they're using the the classic interface here at this point. But tell us a little bit about this dashboard. Yeah. So um, all in all, it's a pretty simple dashboard. However, having it here um, with the tab, as you see at the top easy to access. Um, you could filter on any items like uh, geo, verticals, some product information there, whether you're looking for a case study, um, account segmentation. So you could basically filter it and tailor it to um, the criteria of your prospective customer. Um, yeah, that's and great. So this mm -hmm. next slide now, you're, you're kind of hovering over JetBlue Airways here. So tell us a little bit about this kind of next level one. Yeah, so after you set your filters, uh, you just apply them, and then the results at the bottom will vary. Uh, you could drill into any of the accounts there. As you see, this detail card pops up. I could get a quick overview of if you think this account would be a good reference, maybe for a case study or maybe a more personal touch, get peer-to-peer -to -peer call. Um, as you see, we, we also did the URL action at the bottom. So you could drill into the account uh, just by clicking that hyperlink and you know, still be in Salesforce and be able to follow up with additional details there as well. That's great. So, I mean, I was a sales rep for a, a number of years. And again, the, the reference portion is something that really kind of comes at the tail end. Things are qualified. You got budget. You're trying to drive this thing home and getting references, having references is a make or break. And then aligning those, every reference typically wants to be, okay, I'm an airline, right? I want to talk to JetBlue or I'm a in the finance LOB, I want to talk to a finance person, right? So this is really amazing to be able to go and say, okay, yeah, or they, or they need to be X revenue or X number of users or have some other criteria. So you can literally line up the criteria and pick the ideal reference in an automated fashion here and, and line that up to try to progress that deal. So something that took, you know, might have taken, uh, I think you said when they logged those tickets manually, it might take a few hours to a few days to, um, you know, like a week or more when they're really overloaded, this can have a huge impact across 700 different sales reps. Um, you know, you can really pencil out some revenue numbers that look pretty big. Yeah, that's exactly the case. Um, now that it's a self-serve tool, um, the customer marketing team 
has just been freed up to get more case studies and um, strengthen relationships with other customers and the sales teams can go in here and basically pull uh, based on any criteria that they need. Yeah, that's great. Um, so then you know, how do you look at, uh, at, at expanding this potentially in the future and leveraging it? Yeah, so we have a couple of dashboards that we're thinking about putting in Salesforce as well. Um, one is to help our new tenant seminars and trade show speakers. So you can basically select the criteria um, that maybe a sales engineer specializes in, uh, geography, uh, and this would help um, this would help find speakers for those events, as well as some propensity dashboards. Um, we could see our loyal customers, customers we're potentially losing, um, customers with upsell, cross-sell potential. So there's a lot of room um, to grow here. Yeah, that's exciting stuff. So, so completely d different areas, right? And I, and I can see this where um, this is great. You know, you guys are growing quickly. It's a very competitive market. You compete against uh, Cisco and Dell and HP and, and other folks that provide provide converged uh, infrastructure and and so you're finding people that'll speak on your advisory boards and your conference and then maintaining those customers right so so keeping customers from uh, not only leaving because customer acquisition costs are super high versus maintaining and or expanding your, a given customers usage of your offerings so um, those are really exciting to, to sort of see and and again most of that data uh, some of it's in Salesforce. A lot of it is in, is being captured in other places. Yep. Great. So tell us a little bit about uh, how about the, the 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 business value. Just kind of recap that for us. Yeah. So we're seeing a, a huge adoption rate um, now that this is available to the sales reps. Uh, the numbers of views and uses to the dashboard have grown exponentially. Um, this in turn has helped shorten sales cycles. Uh, now that they don't have to wait for small teams such as customer marketing to help with all these requests coming in and a quarter, they could just do it themselves. Um, it's been very helpful. And we've received a lot of positive feedback from sales reps. We made tweaks um, in order to uh, put filters that they need to identify specific references. And it's just been you know, great on, on both the sales side and the marketing side. That's great. So your sales and marketing people are more efficient. You've automated a, uh, a manual process. It's being highly adopted. Your reps love it. That sounds like a bunch of good stuff. And then from a technical perspective, again, you're able to leverage data that is outside of Salesforce, combine it with that Salesforce data, and that's really where the magic happens. Their context is handled automatically, right? The dashboard you were looking at is automatically kind of filtered based upon uh, your login and again that peace of mind that comes with knowing that the communication between those is handled automatically and, it, and it's secure So great. Thank you so much Michael. appreciate that. That's really uh, really exciting I think Nutanix is a very exciting company and how you're leveraging this technology is 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 really exciting So in summary, there's a lot of different ways to get to Salesforce data from Tableau and each has its own sort of costs uh, and benefits and things it brings to the table. Tableau Sparkler is a great tool that allows you to leverage the power of those Tableau visualizations and all the data in your organization without having to leave Salesforce. Um, if you leverage Tableau with a combined data source, then your organization can really unlock the power of both of those applications as we saw here with Nutanix. And then the last thing I'll leave you with here is um, the installation of Sparkler is not super straightforward or easy, but the benefits are very significant. Uh, if you want more details about either of those topics, we do, of course, have some great webinars. Um, the first one here is this embedding Tableau and Salesforce dashboards, which is a webinar uh, I gave that talks a lot about the front end stuff, but then I go into the specific technical details of what this is and how to implement it. So how to primer with demos, as I say in the as we say in the tagline. And then if you want to get in more into how to get unlock the gold in Salesforce, we have a a great uh, webinar as well that that talks about uh, getting data out of Salesforce and combining it with other sources like Marketo, for example, and how to really kind of maximize the value there. And of course, how we at Centurus can potentially help you do that 
in a more efficient and effective way because that's what we do. And along those lines, we do have a special offer for all of you there where we will uh, help you embed Sparkler or install Sparkler to embed Tableau visualizations in your Salesforce application. And it includes um, Sparkler, the, the installation of that application, uh, some configuration and installation of the various samples. Uh, we can deviate from this uh, a little bit. For example, like Nutanix, we, we honored the fixed price and embedded uh, their dashboard that they wanted to use. Um, but we can talk to you about that and all for, for $49.95, which is really a, a very low price and we can get you up and running pretty quickly with that. And when you look at the value that that, that brings to the table, hopefully um, most of you are going, wow, that's a, that's a screaming deal. So consider us for that. Now, before we get to the Q&A, uh, I want to do a quick run through for you, those of you who might not know who uh, Centurus is, uh, you know, what we do. We are a full service analytics consulting company. All we do is analytics. We provide clarity from the chaos of complex business requirements, disparate data sources, and constantly moving and changing environments and targets. We made a name for ourselves because of our strength at bridging that gap between IT and the business users. We deliver solutions that give you access to reliable analysis ready data across your organization so you can quickly and easily get answers at the point of impact, make better decisions, and take better actions. Our consultants are experts. They have pragmatic real world experience and experience advancing the state of the art in areas such as dashboard reporting and visualization, data prep and modern data warehousing, self-service, Salesforce reporting, big data advanced analytics, planning and forecasting, and we even have a software arm where we have uh, proprietary uh, connectors. We have a connector that allows you to connect Tableau to Cognos and or MicroStrategy, as well as uh, Power BI connectivity to Cognos and or um, MicroStrategy. We have been doing this for over 18 years. We have over 1,200 clients and have delivered over 2,000 projects. We have a breadth and depth from everybody from Fortune 500 to the mid-market. We've solved business problems across all these industries and functional areas, including things like finance, sales and marketing, manufacturing, operations, human resources, and IT. So if you need someone to help you with your project, we'd love the opportunity to leverage our experience for you. Uh, Centur Centurus is unique in that we are so confident in our ability to deliver you a successful and useful solution that we offer a 100% guarantee. Uh, some additional resources before we get to the Q&A real quickly. We have some great upcoming events. Uh, if you go to centurus.com slash events, you can find them all. We've introduced this weekly wind down where our trainers share their favorite tips. It's 30 minutes long every Friday. Sometimes there's Tableau tips. Sometimes it's Cognos tips. Uh, it varies, but 30 minutes of some great, easily digestible, useful information, things like doing time series analysis in Tableau or using parameters in Tableau or maybe working with sets. Uh, so there's there's great, highly valuable, useful information to uh, feed your brain on a Friday before you check out for the weekend. And then we invite you, you Cognos folks, we invite you to the NorCal Cognos user group meeting. We're doing that to Thursday, November 8th between 10 and 2. Uh, go ahead and click on that NorCalCognosUsers.com link. Again, this deck will be available after the webinar. You can visit that URL or just click the link in the deck and you'll be taken there where you can register. We do encourage you to visit our resource library for the recording of this webinar in the deck as well as our uh, very valuable blog so you can find out kind of what's top of mind in very digestible format. Uh, we've got some great content up there and then our resource library is fabulous for finding more webinars like this and others that talks about uh, we've got white papers and presentations that talk about technical aspects, tips and tricks, best practices and other thought leadership areas. And then finally we do offer in addition to a full spectrum of consulting we do offer training uh, on, on Cognos as well as Tableau. So you can go to uh, our training area on centurus.com and you can view the schedule. You can compare Cognos and or Tableau training classes. We have everything from fundamentals through expert and advanced and server. So there's some uh, great training off offerings there. All right, so thank you for paying attention during that. And now we have a little q and I'm looking for the questions panel okay, here. Okay, Mike. We've We've got uh, several questions lined up. Uh, the first um, one is, can you just walk through the difference between 
Sparkler and Canvas and also speak to um, the advantage of using Sparkler and Canvas opposed to iframe? Sure. So, um, so Sparkler is a Java adapter developed by Tableau that uses the Salesforce Canvas application framework. So Canvas is a Salesforce application development framework. So, you, so in order to use Sparkler, you create a Canvas application in Salesforce and point it to Sparkler. Sparkler is a piece of code that uh, runs on an application server and Salesforce talks to, and it basically establishes the trust relationship between uh, Salesforce and Tableau. And then um, once that trust relationship is established, then Salesforce and Tableau talk to each other directly for that given user session. Again, the, um, I steered away for purposes of this presentation, I steered away from the technical details, uh, and you can visit that webinar where I do get into those technical details very much and uh, go through the kind of installation and configuration process there, but hopefully that helps you with that. So this is more around how does Nutanix use this? What's the value they got from it? What are the various ways of getting at Salesforce data from Tableau and what are the benefits of those? So it's more of a business value presentation. The other one is is a little more uh, technically oriented. So hopefully that clears that up for you. And the iframes. Yeah, the iframes. So we do see people implementing iframes. The problem is that iframes are kind of perceived as a, uh, oftentimes as a, as a security risk for uh, hackers for various reasons. And we've even seen uh, Salesforce uh, kind of indicate that they were going to not support the use of iframes. So, um, but they seem to have backtracked on that and they're still available. So you can still use iframes. The challenge is that those three things I mentioned up front is that Sparkler for as, as relatively, you know, as cheap as it is, it's free, right? The adapter itself is free and uh, as cheap as it is to implement, it will handle that trust relationship. And so you don't get just a login screen and then have to log in and uh, and and you can then pass those parameters back and forth in a in a dynamic fashion, pulling Salesforce fields like user ID and opportunity and all that stuff uh, automatically into those uh, Tableau Tableau dashboards. So it's really kind of streamlining that whole process. It's more elegant. Okay, and then specifically, someone um, mentioned kind of in, they had heard that there might be incompatibility with the Lightning Salesforce Lightning interface um, sure. due to Salesforce restricting I, iframes. Yeah, I see that, um, and it, honestly, we had no trouble implementing it. So, um, you know, like I said, I've I've I have it implemented here. I have my own Salesforce instance, and it was con set up and configured essentially the same way as. We did it on the uh, classic environment, and I, as you saw, I can toggle back and forth between the two. So uh, there really hasn't been an issue with it to this point, and as as far as I see it, uh, I, I wouldn't foresee an issue. So we've done it with. Uh, I see a question there asking if we've done it with uh, Salesforce Mobile. So we don't have any customers that are that are using it in a mobile perspective. Uh, you'll notice that the the dashboards that I put up there, those are pretty big dashboards, and they're they're really designed for the desktop. So for the mobile experience, um, you can certainly do it. Uh, and we have people that are exploring it or are interested in it. Uh, we do have people that are experts in doing, uh, you know, embedding whether it's Tableau in in Salesforce or you know we have other offerings as well, uh, but it's that kind of comes down to you know I, I can open up Salesforce One on my mobile app and I can pull this up. Is it uh, visually desirable? Not necessarily because it's trying to put everything on that on that little screen, but if I, I would definitely design a mobile optimized um, you know dashboard to display for those environments and then set that up with those profiles and you know configure it so that that you could do that. It certainly is it's technically feasible. So we, there's another question there about Sparkler, you know, using a direct connection, mean live connection to Salesforce production instance. So uh, no, you can't do direct connections to the Salesforce production instance. When you're doing the Tableau connections, you are landing the data somewhere, right? You're either using Tableau, you're either dumping out flat files or you're using the Tableau connection to Salesforce, which forces you to create an extract or you're using some kind of a bulk loader or ETL process to put that into a, a database. Now that said, you can run those updates, whether it's to the extract or whatever your feed is, you can set those to run 
uh, fairly frequently. Um, I believe you know we have people that are running them every 15 minutes or so. So the uh, what constitutes real time and the frequency with which you'll want to update your data depends on a number of factors, right? The size of your organization, how many reps do you have, what's the velocity of your uh, opportunities and volume of your opportunities. So all of those things and other uh, things should be taken into consideration. And again, that's something that we help our customers do from a requirements gathering perspective. We help them do that all the time. We say in our environment, what makes the most sense so we can maximize the impact on our, our, on our bottom line. And we talk about uh, using the Salesforce connector in terms of doing separate extracts for each objects. Um, so, so typically what this will do um, when you're using the Salesforce connector, and I assume by that you mean the Tableau Salesforce connector, again, it is going to force you to create an extract and uh, it, it, it will pull in by default your accounts and opportunities and several other uh, Salesforce tables. Um, you can certainly separate those out manually and do one for accounts and one for opportunities. Uh, that will vary depending, again, on your organization, right? Some organizations have smaller transactions but a higher volume and they close those very quickly. Then you have maybe the need for more uh, real-time access to that and you have a, a huge opportunities table that you might want to separate out and then you'd handle that some other way. Uh, and, you, and extracts might not even be the, the best option for you. Uh, if on the other hand, you've got other companies where they have a very small amount of transactions, but they're large and they move more slowly, in which case right, you don't need a real live connection because it doesn't change a whole lot. And extracts might be just fine and one extract might be fine. So it's really kind of uh, dependent upon the specific parameters that drive your business and what you need to optimize the uh, to leverage the analytic capabilities, uh, you know, kind of latent in that data. So I see another question, is there a way to use the canvas and have the user choose between multiple dashboards or on the fly use a new dashboard that they have created? Um, so the embedded capability is really about displaying existing content. Now that said, um, you can provide multiple different options. Uh, and in fact, we have several installed on, uh, I, you know, I have several installed in, in my environment, right? I'm still in the classic interface, but I have my Tableau uh, open, open pipeline and I have an opportunity overview dashboard. So I could create those tabs and I can even have different permutations of say accounts or opportunities. And then my users to the, the extent to which they have the ability to customize their user interface, they could pick and choose and move around the one that they want to use more, most often and make that somewhat dynamic. Uh, in terms of actually creating content here, um, I'd have to, uh, we could explore that, but I don't believe that's really something that, uh, I, don't, I don't think through the Tableau APIs, like the embedded APIs and whatnot right now, you can really enable that full, you know, you wouldn't see down here, create a new dashboard. Uh, so that's something we'd have to look into for you, and maybe that's something we could come up with on a custom basis. Um, if uh, if I'm wrong on that, we'll have uh, we'll we'll correct that in the in the questions log and or loop back with you. So the infrastructure for Sparkler, that's a great question. Um, infrastructure requirements for Sparkler, what about if you're on the cloud? Um, the, the infrastructure requirements, and that depends on the number of users, but uh, it's pretty lightweight, to be honest. Um, we have, uh, I don't have the exact specifications of the Sparkler server that we're running, for example, uh, at Nutanix, but all it's doing is handling that trust relationship. For and it does that once for a given user session. So um, the Nutanix server, Mike, did you, Michael, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry, I was unable to get that. Uh, yeah, no, that's okay. Um, uh, it, so for those 700 users, they're running that on a, on a fairly lightweight box and without issues, right? They can it handles that trust relationship, and then the communication happens directly between Salesforce and the Tableau server. So Sparkler's not part of that communication chain anymore, it's not doing any processing. So it really kind of has this one-time job per session and then it's it's off to the side. So it's not a, a huge uh, infrastructure you know, burden, if you will. If you're in the cloud, it's it's fine. Um, you know, Salesforce is obviously in the cloud. You can do, so if you have, by cloud, if you mean uh, Tableau Online, then you, um, then Sparkler isn't 
really an option for you. Um, there's a if again look at that technical presentation that I I did a few uh, a few months ago. There is a a guide and the guidance there is that you have to use SAML authentication because you just don't have the ability to configure Tableau online, right? There's a very limited amount of things you can do and there's certain things you have to do uh, to the Tableau server that you can't do to Tableau online. So Sparkler isn't really a good option for you there. Um, beyond that, right, getting into your data sources and things like that, it, it's, it's fine. And your Salesforce, for example, can be, uh, in many cases, they're remote and whatnot. So as long as you have you know, VPN access and or you set up proxies, there's no reason you can't uh, deploy that in uh, various different places, right? You could deploy Sparkler in the cloud, configure it to see your Salesforce and your Tableau environments, and it would work just fine. So the most viewed, somebody asked, what is your most viewed dashboard within Salesforce? It is the open pipeline. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't looked honestly at the, uh, at the specifics. I would uh, hazard, you know, so we actually, um, we're, we're using these here at Centurus where we, we look at some of this data and we have the an enhanced database that we combine with a bunch of our marketing data so our reps can see, um, you know, in addition to the, the deal information, they can see what customers are, are viewing content and stuff like that, which is oftentimes an indicator that they might have, uh, there might be an opportunity bubbling up or brewing. So that would feed a dashboard, and this is typically your, you know, this open pipeline dashboard is your launching point. Uh, so I would argue that uh, relative to any specific uh, account or opportunity, they would start from this high level and focus on, you know, if you've built the dashboard right, this should definitely be the number one place they go, right? They want to know what's my pipeline, what, um, where in the deal funnel are my deals, right? What are my top deals that I'm gonna try to close? If I'm a sales rep, I'm spending a whole ton of time on my top 10 opportunities. So that would be uh, my argument there, but I don't have any specific statistics to necessarily back that up. So those are great questions. Um, I appreciate all of those. Um, we still got a, a few minutes here, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll sit here and I'll, I'll look at this for just a second. And if uh, some more questions come in here, we can we can answer those. But uh, at the same time, uh, we'll, that's the end of the formal presentation. So I wanna thank all of you for your time today. I wanna especially thank Michael Hunter for taking time out of his busy day, um, you know, A, for joining us for this webinar and B, for uh, being a, a client of Centurus. We certainly uh, value you and, and we love to see our, our customers happy and, and doing some really cool things with this technology. So if you have any analytics needs, that's all we do all day, every day. Please give us a call. Check us out on centurus.com. Email us at info at centurus.com. If you're old school and want to call a phone number, we got a 888 number. Check us out on LinkedIn, SlideShare. We have a YouTube uh, channel as well as Twitter and, of course, Facebook. And thank you for your time today. We look forward to seeing you on another Centurus Knowledge Series webinar down the road. Have a great day, and thanks for joining us today. Bye now.